So the slabs are usually on top of the columns and we will use the story height to define the placement of the slabs. So for that we can either use a box, a grid, there's different ways of doing this. In this case I will use the grid that we already have and I will just translate it. I will use this same geometry, the same information that we already have and just move it upward with a transform. So I will add a transform node and connect it to the grid. I will also change the color of the node. And the, the position of the grid will be defined as, as I already mentioned with this story height. So I will copy this value and channel reference this value to the Y translation of this grid. I'll template our new grid. We should see it exactly at four meters height. So we can check that through the front view. I will shift three to go to the front view and I will activate my viewport grid and we can see it's fine. It's elevated four meters. Now the thing is the columns are not exactly where they should be. They're, they're much higher than the slab height. So probably this height parameter of the column we can just channel reference to the story height value. Probably we don't need to manually change this. So let's think ahead. Uh, not only the, the height of the column will be dependent of the story height, but also it will depend on the slab thickness. So probably we should have to add uh, a mathematical expression to define this height. So let's work on the height thickness first because we know that the height of the column will depend on the thickness too. And then we can go back to the user interface and change this part. So to, the, to create the thickness of the slab, I will add a poly extrude node. This, a ver this is a very useful node. Uh, I use it a lot. I will change it, its color again just to know it, it will be channel referenced. And the distance we can change based on a parameter on an int of, of our interface. So just make sure on this node to check out go back faces, otherwise it will be hollow. By default, this, uh, this parameter is off. So I will turn on output back faces and I'll go back into my interface for the building and again edit some of its parameters. So I know now that I won't manually change the height of the column so we can delete this for sure. Add a new folder and just make sure the, the folder is on the root of the, of the list. Change the name to slabs. And let's add a float value to define the thickness. Change the channel name to slab thickness. And we will also want a group and a color for the slabs. So we could duplicate the column uh, parameters by pressing B and moving them to the, to the corresponding folder. The label can be the same, group and color. I will just make sure to change the channel name to slab group 
and slab color. Make sure that the default for the slab group is not columns, of course, it should be slabs. And the default thickness of the slab can be 0.2 meters. And let's see how this works. Of course, we need to copy the parameter for the thickness and channel reference it to the extrusion distance. And there we go. It's working fine. The only thing I want to change is the style for the folder. I forgot to change the style, so I'll go back to the parameter interface and change the folder type to simple and accept it. So I will revert back to the default of 0.2 for the thickness. So now that we have defined the thickness parameter of this lab, I'm going to make two small fixes to the geometry. First of all, I'm going to subtract the slab thickness to the translation that we already did. Because now if you check on the front view, the slab is surpassing this height that we had defined here for our story. So let's copy the thickness parameter of the slab and on our transform node I am going to subtract this value so now we have the top face of our slab exactly on four meters so again we could check that and it's working fine now. And the columns, we need to fix the height for the columns. So we now won't change the height manually. We will channel reference the story height, paste it on the Y size as a reference. and subtract the slab thickness again. So I'll copy the thickness and subtract and paste it here as a relative reference. There we go. So now everything is working as expected. So remember we created a group also for the slab and a color. So let's now create those nodes. I'm going to create a group node, change the color of the node and channel reference this parameter to the name of the group. Also, I'm going to add a color node and channel reference the color of the slab to the color of the node. So it's working fine. Now we can merge these two geometries. We can merge the columns with the slabs. and it's working as, ex as expected. Now, just a few notes. We would probably want to control the normals for each element. I usually like to put a normal node before I merge. So I'm going to define a point normal, sorry, a, a vertex normal. 
with a cusp angle of 20. And I'm going to copy this node and paste it for the slabs as well. Another thing that I'm noticing here is that the slab is a little bit short. So right now the columns are outside the slab and I want to fix that part. So I'm going to go back to the slab part of the model. And after my first poly extrude, I will add a second extrusion to increase the width where the columns are. So first of all, in this first poly extrude node, I'm going to enable a group for the sides. I'm going to call it slab sides. And now we can create a second poly extrude. I'm going to make some room down here. Connect this new node. And make sure we're extruding only the new group that we created, the slab sides. And the amount of extrusion will be half the size of the columns, or actually half the width of the columns. So we can copy this parameter, channel reference it to the distance, and divide it by two. Perfect. I will change the color of this node that was channel referenced. And we can continue now with the walls. 